and we are back. Welcome to the Market Minute with uh, Drewski James. I'm Andrew, your host. Um, well, the market certainly likes the humble people, uh, me often. Yesterday we talked about uh, State of the Union, kind of what that meant for the markets. I didn't think much would happen today, but sure enough, a bunch happened. Um, for starters, I think Microsoft started up about seven, eight bucks today. Closed the day down uh, 50 cents. A reversal like that uh, usually marks tops. That's pretty aggressive. And I think it all came down to all this AI, rush to AI, uh, rush to be first. And right when Microsoft came out with um, you know their investment in jet gpt then it was almost an arms race of well i guess you call it an ai race to who can release their beta projects fastest usually the first one to market i don't want to say always wins but usually has a leg up uh so microsoft um sorry about that uh microsoft had a leg up so Google goes, hey, uh, we got product too. Oh, you guys did a presentation. We're gonna do a presentation. Watch ours. And that presentation was clearly rushed to put together. Not pretty at all. Um, I believe their, I forgot what their AI name is called. Google's AI name, it's called like Bond or something. Um, Bard. That's a cool name. Uh, but they asked a question about, I think, uh, some pictures of some planets, and it got the question wrong. So, right when that happened, Google, I think, was trading about a uh, hundred and ten bucks pre-market. I was wrong, hundred and seven. Immediately, by the time it opened, it was at a hundred and two hit a low of 98 and close around $99. AI is not ready yet and Google proved that. So now it's unwind our AI trades. Everybody rushes in, drives the price up huge and then, you know, something like that happens and then it's take a bunch of profit, recalibrate um reassess value of these things and, you know, you get that's where you get your price moves from. Um, a little shift today. We're back to our um, equity bond relationship that we've been seeing on this sell-off. Um, yields were up, stocks were down. There was an auction today at noon central time that uh, was oversubscribed, very strong auction. And bonds responded, yields came down, which is usually bearish. Stocks made a little run, and then yields f retraced the whole move, but then rallied late in the day. Stocks sold back off and didn't find much of a bid late. I think um, I think a couple warning signs are coming up. I did say bears or I'm sorry, bulls are on borrowed time. And, uh, you know, that clock might be hitting 12 here soon. Something else came out today. I don't know if it's 100% true. I did look up at the options chain. Um, so the volume does uh, collabor collaborate, corroborate this, uh, this news. Carl Icahn is a massive um, investor. He's one of the best to ever do it. And tweet came out today saying he put out I believe it was a five billion notional value uh, put trade on S&P futures I know I said that very bizarrely but um, basically he bought puts for next week Friday expiration in the S&P futures contracts. So 
I think he bought 24,000. It was a $50 million trade. Uh, notional value, I think, is uh, closer to... Uh, what was it? Five billion, I believe. If that's really Carl Icahn, then that's not just a Citadel type fund uh, hedging positions. That's a big ass bet. That's one of the biggest bets ever, and that's for the S and P essentially. S and P is tied to. I don't know what that ring is. I'll fix that. The S and P is tied to their futures contracts. The uh, S and P minis. Um, e S is the symbol for it. Uh, it's a futures, not a stock. So you have to make sure you're searching for it under futures. But that's correlated with the uh, S and P index. S and P closed at forty one eighteen. So this bet, he bought him around twenty dollars or yeah twenty dollars a a piece. So the S and P by next Friday needs to drop about a hundred and thirty. Um, I know what that is. I'll fix that. Sorry. About 130 points from here by next Friday. Uh, again, huge bet. Not 100% sure it's Carl Icahn. I don't know if he uh, came out and said it was him. I don't know why he would. He doesn't talk much. But um, Again, he's one of the best to do it. So that's something to keep an eye on. We do have CPI next week, Vixpiration, uh, Mopex. They call it monthly expirations for stocks. So next week's going to be pretty volatile. Um, key news being the CPI, I believe, on Thursday. So for now, I think it's a lot of repositioning. Um, I did say tech would be weak today, and it most certainly was. NASDAQ uh, outpaced the decline um, almost 2 to 1 over the S&P. Um, Another another stock I kind of like moving forward if, you know, infrastructure, all that other stuff has to be bought in America. There's only one one to do it in America, Iron Ore, Cleveland Cliffs, CLF. It's my favorite stock of all time. Um, keep an eye on that one. Uh, they got earnings, I believe, next week. But if, uh, you know, this infrastructure bill or anything with infrastructure is required to buy American, they're going to be first in line. So they're set for a big year. Um, oddly enough, SaaS names, software as a service names, uh, were pretty strong today. Uh, Palo Alto finished up 4%, Datadog up 2%. Um, those are more cybersecurity, um, but kind of fall under the same umbrella. Everything else in that sector, Snowflake, ServiceNow, is pretty flat. Interesting, considering the NASDAQ was down almost 2% today, and those were relatively strong. We'll see if that shifts tomorrow or if that's uh, insight into next move. We'll know till morning, not much data. Uh, jobless claims comes out, but that's a weekly number, not that huge. Uh, Bitcoin's still kind of just hovering around twenty three thousand. I think, I think we're gonna chop mode probably forty one hundred to forty two hundred on the S and P for the next, um, let's say Wednesday for the next week probably. Um, everybody kind of positioning themselves for the CPI and what moves come next. Uh, things are ticking up. I uh, keep seeing reports that used cars, pr used car prices are back up higher than uh, they were in uh, last month, which, again, if inflation comes roaring back, crude and, you know, used car prices are a big part of that. Crude is up another buck 30 today, uh, so keep an eye on that. But, again, they did recalibrate how they measure CPI, so that's the only wild card, and I think we'll get a, a surprise number way lower than we anticipated because of that reweighting speculation um, so don't necessarily take my word on that I don't know what's gonna happen I don't think anybody does you just gotta play the day out and today was sellers delight basically just uh, 
basically just hammered it all day. Every every opportunity to bounce was just immediately hit with uh, volume on the sell side. Pretty much all day. Uh, so we'll see, keep an eye on uh, treasuries overnight. If they are up in the morning, I think we'll have a nice rebound day. But if they're down again, I think things might get ugly. If you look at some of these daily charts on a lot of these names, uh, they're looking vulnerable um, and toppy. But again, the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. Nailed it that time. Uh, so just be careful. Tesla. What a run, huh? What a run. I don't, I don't know what to say about it anymore. It doesn't make sense to me, so I don't trade it. But uh, if this market does turn, it'll be... Uh, it might be one of the first ones on the uh, two short lists. Uh, anyways, that's today. It's Wednesday, February 8th. Uh, I just set up a Twitter account. You guys can follow me on Twitter um, at Crycopter, K-R-Y-C-O-P-T-E-R. Uh, I just set it up yesterday. Um, and, uh, and my uh, handle is Andrew JK. So follow me there. Subscribe to my channel here. We'll keep doing these every day around the same time, like 3.15 or, or so. Um, today was not the funnest day. But every day brings opportunity. So never put yourself in a position where you can't participate. Uh, manage your positions at every close to make sure that you are safe overnight because anything can happen and right now the news cycle is not good it's fear and loathing everywhere non-stop china building up their military again russia doing this so much fear out there so much fear we got fed talkers talking again so fed talkers fed members talking again Sorry, three hours, you'll, your Twitter feed will just blow up with, uh, uh, Waller said, uh, we're going to have to hold rates at 5% for years. Actually, when he said that, market sold off. I mean, he didn't say exactly that, but he did say it's possible rates will be high for years. Um, and that, of course, would 100% break the, the market. You can't build, um, you can't build an economy the way we just did it for a decade rates were basically at, at zero and free money essentially built the economy and then when you completely take that away all at once which we kind of did over six months if you you know relative to the decade of of nothing it's it's jarring everything changes the consumer changes and it takes a bit for that to really sink into the economy and i think we're starting to see the cracks so you can't build an economy like that and then just take away the punch bowl and assume everything is going to be fine because it's not it takes a long time to adjust so that's always in my head when I'm thinking about what comes next with this market. We haven't seen the full effects. I don't think we've seen much of the effects yet about 5% um, interest rates. But we will. And they'll come and we'll trade off them and make money and keep grinding away. All right. I'm, uh, I'm rambling now. Sorry. Uh, so thank you for joining the Market Minute with Dr Andrew JK. I'm rebranding myself. Uh, stay safe, stay smart. Uh, take your dog for a walk. That's what I'm about to do. Get away from your screens. Uh, all right. Love you. Bye.